This lesson deals with a PNP, Bipolar Junction Transistor. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 10, starting on page 8. Besides the NPN BJT, there is a PNP BJT. I've drawn the symbol here, but with the emitter on the top and the collector on the bottom, and the base still in the middle. I'll explain why in just a little bit. The current now enters the emitter and leaves the base and the collector. In other words, the directions of current are reversed. Now, instead of talking about a base emitter voltage, we're going to talk about an emitter base voltage. Instead of talking about a collector emitter voltage, we'll talk about an emitter collector voltage. The reversal of these voltages will also turn out to be positive numbers, likewise with the currents for the emitter base and the collector. And the reason for this is that the diode we had between the base and the emitter and the base and the collector are now reversed. And that's how we get the change in current being the opposite. This is handy when we're doing audio circuits where we're trying to swing a positive and a negative signal. Now the reason we draw the emitter on the top is that we usually show current flowing from the top of a drawing to the bottom of a drawing. If you solder two diodes together, you won't get the curves that are on the bottom of this page. You get something quite different because inside the piece of silicon, there is some interaction of electrons and that causes a nonlinear function of a current source that's controlled by the emitter base and the emitter collector voltage. This device has all the same terminals as we had before, but every voltage and every current is reversed. The name P and P comes from the fact that we have P and N material and P and N material are two diodes. From the collector to the base to the emitter, we have a PNP variation of material. Let's take a look at what the curves look like. If we now plot the emitter base voltage versus the base current, again, both are reversed, we get exactly the same curve we had for the NPN. Likewise, if we plot the collector current, again, coming out of this terminal, versus the emitter collector voltage, we get exactly the same family of curves with the same regions. When modeling our piecewise linear models, We'll again have three regions, active, saturation, and cutoff, and the conditions will be the same. We'll have the forward biasing of the now the emitter-based diode and the reverse biasing of the collector-based diode, giving us a fixed emitter-based voltage and a fixed ratio of currents. The base current will still need to be greater than or equal to zero, likewise for the collector current, and the voltage across now the emitter collector needs to be greater than or equal to V sub EC sat. Our model is exactly the same model we had before, but now all the directions are flipped. But I'm also flipping the emitter on putting it on top, so it's a double flip, kind of giving us directions that kind of look the same. But my voltage now is between the emitter and the base, fixed at about 0.7 volts, and there's a current flowing out of the collector, which is beta FIB, where I sub B is leaving the base terminal. Now in this model, we're able to guarantee this and this relationship, but we can't guarantee whether this is positive or not. We need to check whether it's greater than or equal to zero. Likewise, the voltage across this current source can be positive or negative. We'll need to check that it's greater than or equal to V sub EC sat. And lastly, the collector current needs to be positive, but if the base current is positive, this controlled source will guarantee that. If you learn the model for the NPN, active region model, it's the same model, but all directions are reversed. The same is true for our saturation region model. To be in this region, we'll again have the two diodes forward biased. But now from the emitter to the base and the collector to the base, we put the P material first, the N second in our labeling of subscripts and letters. Same conditions, but now we have the emitter base voltage equal to a constant, the emitter collector being equal to a constant, and the ratio of IC to IB being less than or equal to beta F. The same model we had before, but now the polarities are reversed. But again, I've done a double flipping here, so my voltage from emitter to base is V sub EB on, and between the emitter and the collector is V sub EC sat. Again, around 0.7 and around 0.2. We do need to check the direction of currents because current in a voltage source can be in either direction. So this base current I gotta check is greater than or equal to zero. Also the collector current is greater than or equal to zero. And their ratio is less than or equal to beta F. Learn the NPN saturation region model. Just flip the directions of the voltage sources, change the directions of the current, and the checks are the same. Our cutoff conditions will also be the same. We'll now have the emitter base and the collector base diodes reverse biased, and they'll give us zero base current, a zero collector current, and a voltage that is less than or equal to the turn-on voltage of V sub EB on. And the emitter collector voltage need to be greater than or equal to zero. Our model is the same, just an open circuit with zero current, but we can't guarantee the voltages across open circuits. We need to check that this voltage is less than or equal to V sub EB on, and then the voltage between the emitter and collector is greater than or equal to zero. We have a PNP transistor, it can be in one of three states, active, saturation, or cutoff. We'll also again have edge conditions. 
There's an edge of saturation model for the PNP transistor with the emitter base voltage being equal to VBE on, the base current greater than or equal to zero, the emitter collector voltage equal to the emitter collector saturation voltage, and the equality of I sub C equal to beta FIB. We use our saturation model and label the condition for the current. Again, the collector current is coming out of the collector. We can't guarantee the direction of I sub B, so we need to check that it's greater than or equal to zero. Now this will be our edge of saturation model. Our second edge condition is called the edge of cutoff, and it's the transition between the active and the cutoff regions. Our conditions will be the same as the NPN transistor, but just reversing the subscripts on the voltages and directions on the current. Now we have an emitter base voltage equal to V sub EB on, base current of zero, an emitter collector voltage greater than or equal to V sub EC sat, and a collector current equal to beta FIB equal to zero. Our model is exactly the same as it was for the NPN, but now the polarities are reversed. So now I have a voltage source between the emitter and the base equal to V sub EB on, no current here, we're gonna label this current here to be zero, which forces this to be zero. Now the voltage cross an open circuit, we can't guarantee the polarity of that, so we're gonna to need to check that the voltage from now the emitter to the collector is greater than or equal to V sub EC sat. And this is the PNP BJT.